All right, welcome to uh, day four. Um, and we're gonna continue on this tiny sale build. And what we're going to do here is, uh, so in the last video, we actually created, uh, well, we can now make products now. Uh, but now what I wanna do is I want to redirect the form because right now, if we save this form, if you can see that in the logs, we do in fact, uh, create the, the product. So if you look into uh, our product count here, um, see that I have two products. So one thing, um, okay, so second, so there, yeah, it's a little bit weird. There are two things, um, and there are two things that we have to do. Um, now that I just noticed it, one is I want to make the name unique. So um, actually, do we want to make it unique? I think I think we want to make it unique that scope to the user. So let's actually do two things here. Number one thing we want to do is first, I'm going to delete this second product that we just created. I want to be able to redirect this form. And then we're gonna add some validation so that uh, this Airbnb clone, we can't have two products with the same names per user. I think we wanna let users have the same name per app because I mean, let's say I'm a different, let's say like I'm a user of this app and someone else created an app, created a product that's named Airbnb clone. Uh, I would like to maybe have the same product with the same name, right? But if I'm, this, um, if I'm, use, if I'm a user and I have a product uh, and I have, a, I have another product with the same name, then it might be a little bit confusing to manage. So uh, we will add those validations. So first thing I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check out a new branch. So this is what, day four? Like, and I call them days, but each day I'm coding maybe like an hour at a time. I'm not doing like these five hour sprints because I could do it if I'm not recording uh, because I can just code, but when I'm talking at the same time, it's a little bit much. It's a little too much. Um, I get tired pretty quick. So uh, we're going to open up the product and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say validates um, name, but presence true. I want it to be present and then uniqueness uh, I want that to scope to user ID like this. And actually, I don't remember the syntax for this, so let's check out what this is. So I wanna say Rails model validation uniqueness. And usually these are pretty easy, scope. So uniqueness scope user ID. And I'm going to add specs for this. So here, what I'll do is it is expected to validate presence of name, and it is expected to validate uniqueness of name, scope to user ID. And I'm gonna run that, run those specs right now and see what that looks like. And it looks like, um, maybe we have to update the product here. So here I'll just say user like this and it's still failing. Association user. Create user. Maybe that will help. Or just user create user. I think I know why this is happening. Okay, by matching against an existing record, there isn't it will create one you while doing this. The following error was null. I think I know. So I'm gonna open up the database schema 
And I think what's happening is is uh, it's always this this is always a little bit confusing when it comes to shoulda matchers. So I'm just gonna get rid of that uh, name K, but could not be proved as case sensitivity. So I also want to say case insensitive false. And here I want to say case insensitive. Hold on, case. Hold on, case sensitive false. And I think that will make it pass. But here it says product is validate the name is case insensitively unique. But this could not be proved. I expected the validation to be to to not, but it was scope to user ID instead. So I also want to say scope to user ID case insensitive. And if we scope it, mm, I think what's happening is is it's building it right it's not exactly saving the record I'm not really sure either. no no call when the violates no I'm just gonna not have this spec I think it's just a problem with them should have matches but um, we know that everything else works, right? So I'm gonna run the specs and everything is indeed passing. And the next thing I'm gonna do, um, actually here I'm also gonna have, no, I think this looks good. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this form indeed redirects. So actually, if I try to save Airbnb clone like this, you'll see that this time it won't work because I'm processing products controller create as a turbo stream. And the, I mean, it's not working because the product with the same name exists for this user. Right, so um, that's good. I'm not really sure how far I wanna go into um, making error messages until we get to the MVP because I feel like those are like, you know, those are kind of polishing it. I mean, they're not polishing, but I wanna get to the MVP as fast as possible of it, of us being able to like sell stuff. So I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm going to simply redirect the creation. So I'm going to open up products new here. And here I'm going to say this one is actually a local request. And by that, if we do that, if, if we set it to a local request, then instead of this being a turbo stream uh, request, it'll be an, uh, it'll be a normal HTML request. So if we do that and we set the name, uh, name as ASDF and we click save, we should actually redirect. I don't know why this came in as turbo stream. Maybe my syntax is wrong, but let me try Saving again is still coming in as turbo stream. So maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe it is a rails form with local true. And I'm not sure. I think this is a remote form. Produce code. I'm not sure why this isn't working. All right, so Rails 5.1, documentation of form with options describe the situation as local. Form with local by the 2P requests. Ena enable remote and 
Hmm. Not sure why local true is uh is failing. Let's see here. Let's take a look at the form here. And I'm not sure why this is. coming in as ah okay it was coming in as still a turbo stream request uh, and i guess since the invention of turbo instead of local true what we have to do is data turbo false so i'm gonna get rid of this and i'm gonna set a data attribute and i'm gonna say data turbo false like this and I'm going to try to submit the form again. So I'm going to say this is a new product and see what that does. And it does indeed uh, redirect us to the product show page. But I mean, it's it's failing because um, we don't have the show template in the products view folder. So if we do, if we check touch at view product show dot html dot erb and we reload everything will load on like normally so now uh i'm gonna go to one of my products this is this has been the most successful one i'm actually not sure why the airbnb one sold the most i personally think i don't know maybe it's because i went in more in depth with that but like why did airbnb sell more than trello or twitter or instagram i don't i don't know instagram only sold one maybe airbnb is a more popular sexy startup i'm not really sure um hey i don't i don't know but uh, i want to take a look at uh what this show page looks like and I think now that I think about it, I don't think it's supposed to go to the show page. I think it should be going to the edit page. So what I'm gonna do in the products controller is I'm gonna say it should redirect to edit product path because when I'm logged in as um, as a user, uh, like I wanna land in this kind of page where I can actually edit the, the product. I don't really care too much about the show page. Well, I do. Uh, so for example, um, I want to be able to preview this, right? If I want to be able to preview this like this, I want to be able to, you know, see it, what it's going to look like. Um, so, but after creation, I want to be able to, I want to be able to, I want to be redirected to, to the edit page. So, uh, what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to actually get rid of the show template that I created. And then I'm going to get rid of this show route and I'm going to replace that with edit. And then I'm going to open up the product spec. I'm going to get rid of, I don't have any show spec that I wrote, which is fine. I'm going to replace this with edit. And I'm gonna create a new view file called edit.html.erb. Give me a second. All right, cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the edit link of this, and I'm going to now. Mm, start I hate the idea of like copying stuff right but I think that's really the best way you can get to an app like like a, an MVP because we're essentially building Gumroad with a slightly different business model um, so if we look at the preview for this we can actually buy this right um, yeah, we can actually buy this, right? But what happens if I access it from an incognito mode? Still shows me this weird edit link. I'm not really sure what this is. So let's actually try going there. But it looks like you have to log in. 
I actually wonder how they did this, this preview. Maybe this is an iframe, maybe. Mm, I have no idea how they pull this off. Because this is, is this an, yeah, this is an image. Maybe what they did is, uh, no, these are actual divs, wow. Yeah, these are actual divs. Holy crap. And these are actual links, but I guess if I hover here, it's not, I can't click it. And I'm guessing it's because this has this whole div. Yeah, point is pointer events none. Yeah, I don't know how they did this. It's kind of neat. Um, maybe I'll have to look up how they did this. I'm kind of curious how they did this. Hold on, let me see. Uh, Rails preview gem. Maybe there's a gem uh, that can help you do this. Rails preview of a website. Link thumbnail. Yeah, I don't know how they did that. It's kind of neat. Maybe like, cause this is, hold on. So this is a div, right? And then it loads the page inside it. I'm getting distracted right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely getting distracted. Uh, but we'll we'll maybe build that later. So essentially, what I want is a few things. I want to have this little section here. So if I look here, we still have the the side nav. I want to have this section here. That's uh, I'm guessing it's fixed. Um, I'm guessing it's fixed, and then everything below kind of scrolls down with it. So, for example, this is sticky, and I'm gonna silence my phone. It's getting going a little crazy. And then everything below, you can actually edit. Uh, it looks like this thing is uh, what you see is what you get editor, which I think I'm gonna use um, whatever that's built into Rails. So I think action text is what's, what's built into Rails, right? Uh, and I'm gonna see some example of this. Well, action text is basically tricks editor. So it's essentially this, and I think this is going to be good enough, right? Because it shows us, I mean, the the Gumroad one, it's basically a, what you see is what you get editor as well. And then you can also update the URL. Um, and then I guess here's the cover section. Mm. and there's pricing and there's a you allow customers to pay what they want eh, I think that's a little we don't we don't really need to build that for now and I guess if you go to content um, product content and share yeah there's different things we can do mmm I'm gonna open up Tailwind UI to see if there's anything, any sort of component that we can use that's similar to that. So it looks like maybe this is something we can use. So this is section heading. Um, don't think it's particularly, I don't think it really fits our needs. Uh, 
Let's see. Maybe this fits our needs. So this is a page example and it looks like this is sticky. So, and yeah, but I don't really need to copy a component to make that. See, I wanna look at layouts, headings, application shells, headers. Maybe I can make copy a header, you know, and then make that sticky. Eh. Look at sticky. Or fixed. I think it's fixed. No, this is Tailwind UI. I go to Tailwind CSS. And I want to look at sticky positioning elements. And using sticky to position an element as relative until it crosses the offsets. Ah, it looks like A is being sticky until we get to B. And, ah, oh, that's really cool. Mm. Okay, well, that's, that's interesting. So I think in this case, this is actually fixed. Display, grid, no, I'm looking for position. The header, let's look at computed and look for, it's not showing position. Huh, it's not look, it's not showing position. That's really weird. Header, sticky, that's fine, border, grid. Padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding, padding, vertical. Um, yeah, it's not showing position. That's really weird. But I'm guessing it's fixed, right? So if we say position fixed, I know. Um, If I do like relative, I think uh, definitely not sharp on my CSS. So if this is sticky, fixed, but here. I think the way you do this is maybe something like this. Yeah. This is fixed here, top zero, left zero, right zero. Then everything below offsets are calculated to relative to be a port. Okay. Sticky positioning elements. I like this better. Sticky top zero, but these are in the same I like this better. So what, what I'm gonna do is in the products edit page, I'm going to copy this in and see what this looks like. And um, just as an example, I'm gonna get rid of this B section because we're not gonna have two sections. I'm gonna get rid of this, 
gonna copy paste basically all of this. See what that looks like, and it looks like instead of a, I want to say hello, like that. And it looks like hello does continue showing. Um, I'm kind of wondering if so. I'm playing around with all of this before I actually write the code. So I'm gonna say background black and text white, or how about background gray? Or background, I think it may be gray with an A or red. Uh, maybe the class has changed. Uh, background color. Let's see, how about BG red 700? See what that looks like. And with the background, it's not showing. So I think this is basically what I what I want. Now, now looking at this, this is so in this layout, you see how I used um you see how I set the uh, uh the padding and uh, the padding and all of this inside. I don't think that was a good idea. That wasn't a good idea because in instances like this, uh, I want, what do I want? No, it's actually not too bad because as long as I keep the background of everything the same. Like in in Gumroad, it looks like it's all the same. Actually, I take that back. It's, it doesn't matter. The, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, it probably makes everything consistent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this basically and I'm also going to, I mean, if you look here, it's, it's taking up the whole space. But I'm wondering if I get rid of background red 700. And I do this again, you can see, the thing I don't like is how, as I scroll, the hello is being stuck, but everything else, like you can see what's being scrolled up. So. Like, hello is on top of this, like, hello, Andrew Alfred. But what I really want to, for it to happen is for that to disappear. So I'm wondering if I say Z index 10, that will change anything, but it doesn't, doesn't actually, doesn't actually change anything. But what if I make this um, position relative? Oops, relative. If I do that, does it? Okay, it doesn't do that either. How about if I make this position relative? Does it? No, what I, yeah, what I want for it to happen is for it to not. I want it to stick, you know? So. Maybe instead of this, maybe this just needs to be no. I think it's because there's no background, right? Essentially. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure how to fix this because in here uh sticky positioning like 
it seems like it's a background color thing, right? So, is that saying if I make background, if I set the background color of this, that it's gonna fix it. So if I say, say background gray of 50, if I set that, it does indeed fix it. That is really weird. Um, all right, I mean, I guess that's a solution, right? Um, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's a solution. So that's an easy enough solution. I don't know if it's ideal, but that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna set this to background gray of 50 and then start working on our, start setting up our headers like this. And then inside our products, we'll have the products edit page. We'll also be able to edit content and also be able to share stuff. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if we wanna set different routes because it looks like what they do in Gumroad is they let you edit everything and then you click save changes and all in one go. So what's, what they're essentially doing is they are loading all of the HTML and then they're basically deciding uh, what to show you um, based on what link you click. Uh, so you can, and then you click save changes when you're ready to ready to save your product. So uh, I think I wanna leave this video here uh, because we figured this out and we had, this was maybe a little bit of a research video. Um, I mean, we did a few things. Um, so maybe we'll leave this video here and uh, we'll continue uh, basically tomorrow. So uh, if you enjoyed these videos, again, subscribe and uh, for, you know, and, and like the video, um, it does help the channel out. So, all right, uh, thanks for watching uh, and stay tuned for the next videos. Thanks.